Hi everyone. Today we will recap an action, thriller, horror movie, called The Platform. The movie tells the story of Goring, a volunteer who volunteered to go to prison for a degree, but what he didn't know was that the prison was a living hell. So, make sure you watch this video till the end, for a better experience. At the beginning of the movie, the chefs are seen preparing a lot of luxurious food, even the head chef is very concerned about all the food, from beauty, to hygiene and taste. The scene changes to show a man named Goring, who just woke up in a prison cell with an old man named Terry Magasi. Because Goring is a new prisoner there, Terry Magasi tells him that they are both on the 48th floor, and how surprised Goring was when he saw a prison that turned out to be multi-story, with a hole in the middle that was very deep. Terry Magasi says that the most important thing there is to eat, and the 48th floor is a pretty good floor. Terry Magasi revealed that exactly every one month the prisoners would be moved to a different floor, either upstairs or downstairs. Then soon the light turned green, and down came the elevator's floating dining table filled with leftover food, and the table was called a platform. This is where Goring realized the meaning of the 48th floor was a good floor, because they still got quite a lot of leftover food from the 47 floors above. At first, Goring clearly refused to eat the food, especially seeing its disgusting shape, but it was different with Terry Magasi who ate greedily while it was on a pretty good floor. Instead of eating, Goring took a pear that was still intact for him to keep, but when the food elevator went down, the temperature in the room suddenly became hot. Terry Magasi then explained that the prisoners were forbidden to keep any food, and their opportunity was only during mealtimes, if they violated the temperature in the cell would be changed to very, very hot. Terry Magasi suggested that Goring throw away the pear. Sure enough, the temperature in the room immediately returned to normal after Goring threw away the pear. The scene changed to show a flashback when Goring had just arrived at the building to volunteer to do a job, he was promised to get an accredited diploma in return, but on condition that Goring could not leave this prison for six months, and he was allowed to take one object of his own freely whatever it was. Goring agreed to the terms there, and he decided to bring a book. The next night Goring heard a sound far below the hole, which turned out to be the sound of the food table rising to the top floor at very high speed. The next day when it was mealtime, Goring, who still felt disgusted with the food, chose to endure his hunger. Terry Magasi then advised Goring not to waste the opportunity to eat. Terry Magasi then told Goring that he had been on the 132nd floor, and he could still see many more floors below him, and even worse, there was no food left on the floor. Hearing that, Goring tried to get the people on the floors above and below him to keep the food on each floor, and hoped that they would pass the idea on to the next floor, which was clearly opposed by the upper and lower floors. After learning about the prison system, and his stomach began to starve, Goring was finally forced to eat little by little, until suddenly a prisoner committed suicide and fell right on his food. Although the upper floors enjoyed more food, but the people who committed suicide could have been mentally stressed while in the cell. Goring also wondered if Terry Magasi had a cellmate before she came, especially since Terry Magasi claimed to be on the 132nd floor last month, but where was the inmate who was in the same cell with him, why there was no sign of anything. Then Terry Magasi showed an item he was carrying which was a large knife, and this is where Goring concluded that Terry Magasi's previous cellmate had been killed and eaten alive, considering that they were on the 132nd floor which clearly lacked food, and that's why he could now be in the same cell with Terry Magasi. Goring who knew this fact just fell silent, and soon the food table reached their floor, then a woman named Miharu was seen, sitting silently on the food. Here Terry Magasi did not care and continued to eat his food, it was revealed that Miharu always went down the elevator every week to find where her only daughter was, even she did not hesitate to kill her cellmate, in the hope that her daughter would be able to be in the same cell with her next month. Meanwhile, Terry Magasi tells Goring if he didn't kill his cellmate before, he reveals if his friend's detention time is over so maybe he is now free. When they were on the 132nd floor, they could survive by eating the corpses that fell from the upper floors, to survive they were forced to become cannibals. After knowing that Goring finally realized, he could not help but follow the rules there. Day after day Goring went through the rules in the prison, and the longer he left his humanity until finally the 30th day arrived. Terry Magasi said that soon there would be anesthetic gas release, and they would wake up on different floors. The next morning when Goring woke up, he was suddenly shocked to learn that they were now on the 171st floor, 
which was even more horrible than the 132nd floor, and for that month they had no other choice but to eat or be eaten, because there would be no food left until that floor. Terry Magasi managed to tie up the fry on the floor, but he wasn't going to kill it because that would make the meat rot quickly, so he would let the fry fast for eight days, only then would he cut up the meat. From that conversation we can conclude that Terry Magasi's cellmate was really killed. A short eight days have passed, Terry Magasi who is very hungry will start slicing a little goring meat, while goring can only cry and resign himself to the condition of his body later. When the first piece of meat is sliced, suddenly Miharu comes and immediately kills Terry Magasi. She frees Goring because she knows Goring is a good person. Immediately after that they both immediately eat Teramagasi's meat. Day after day passed, Teramagasi's corpse, which was rotting and filled with maggots, continued to be eaten by Goring without disgust. However, because of this, Goring now began to hallucinate, as if he was haunted by the spirit of Teramagasi's grandfather who said that Goring was just like him, a murderer. One month had passed for Goring, and during the process of moving floors, Goring woke up on the 33rd floor with his new cellmate, Imagiri, who brought his pet dog named Ramses. Imagiri is a woman who works in the admin department, who interviewed Goring when Goring was interested in volunteering there. Just like Goring, Imagiri came to the pit prison not because of a case but because of her own will. Imagiri explained that the place was called a vertical self-management center, as far as she knew there were a total of 200 floors in there, and there were no children under the age of 16. The purpose of the prison was made to trigger spontaneous acts of solidarity, because in fact the food from the top would suffice all the stomachs in prisoners to the lowest floor if divided equally. When the food came, Imagiri still had time to choose food for her dog, and after the food elevator came down she asked the people on the floor below him to divide the food equally, and asked to pass it on to the floor below him again. But they didn't care what she said, Goring then said that everything that happened there was the responsibility and sin of the manager. But Imagiri, who has been working for 25 years, believes that the manager made the prison with good intentions and goals. Every day Imagiri takes enough food and always tells the people under her to do the same, hoping that someday they will understand her intentions. This incident was exactly the same when Goring just got in there, and imagined that Imagiri continued to eat without regard for other humans. Because he was fed up, Goring finally helped Imagiri not with kind words but with the threat of dirtying every grain of rice before the food came down, and that method turned out to be successful because threats are much more effective than dialogue. The next day when the elevator came, Miharu was seen fainting on it, so Goring immediately carried her and took care of her overnight. But when they both fell asleep, Miharu killed Ramses, in retaliation for Imagiri having sent her to the infernal prison. Imagiri was devastated to see it, she said that 10 months ago she did choose Miharu to go in there, but she was alone and there was no daughter at all, it could be that her daughter was just Miharu's hallucination. Imagiri swore that during her 25 years of work, she did not know that the people who had been sent were in a place like hell. Long story short after a month passed, Goring almost had a heart attack, after knowing they woke up on the 202nd floor, and he saw that there were still many floors below him, that means Imagiri himself did not know if the floor was more than 200. Knowing she would not be able to survive, Imagiri decided to hang herself. Now, Goring is also haunted by the figure of Imagiri who asks for her body to be eaten so that Goring can survive, and remove the dirt from her human flesh. But Goring refuses, and prefers to endure his hunger by eating the papers in his book, and not touching even a little of Imagiri's corpse. Fortunately, Goring managed to survive and thankfully now he is on the sixth floor, one cell with a man named Baharit. Seeing the floor approaching the top, Baharit was happy and asked for help from the people on the fifth floor to help him get upstairs so he could escape from the whole prison. After a long discussion, the two people at the top finally agreed to help Baharit, but it turned out that he was given poop by the prisoner above him. Even though Goring would be free in two months, he didn't just relax and ask Baharit for help to distribute food fairly, by going down using the food elevator to the lowest floor. It turns out that while on the 202nd floor before, every day Goring counted how long it took the elevator to get to the ground floor and back up again. According to Goring there were at least 250 floors there, and if they managed to survive to the ground floor they could take the food elevator to the zeroth floor, then escape from the prison. Baharit finally agreed and they began to scrap iron beds as weapons. On floors 7 to 50, no one was allowed to eat because they could still fast for a day, and anyone who resisted would be immediately finished off by them. Until finally Baharit met a wise old man named Mr. X, 
he was always with the intentions of the two of them but did not like the way they were doing it, he wanted them to have a dialogue or negotiation first and convince the people below, and if the people rebelled then they would be finished off. He also said that the manager of the place had no conscience, but unlike the workers on the zeroth floor who certainly still have a conscience, therefore the two of them must bring one delicious and very beautiful luxury dish intact to the zeroth floor, as a symbol and message that they succeeded in consolidating the principles of all prisoners, as well as stopping the animalism in the pit prison. According to the wise man's mandate, they finally brought panicata as a message to the workers above. On the next floor some prisoners managed to cooperate and eat according to rations, but some other prisoners did not care and rebelled, so they were immediately flogged mercilessly. Then on the 100th floor down, it was seen that many prisoners died because they were killed by Miharu, and it turned out that the food table would continue to run if there were no living prisoners on the floor, that means the lowest floor was definitely more than 250. Until finally they saw Miharu who was brutally stabbed by one of the prisoners, and Goring who saw it immediately beat the prisoner, while Baharit fought another prisoner, but he was hit by a katana sword quite deep in his waist. Just when Goring was hit repeatedly, strangled and started dying, Baharit managed to kill two prisoners at once with a katana sword, but unfortunately Miharu was not saved, and they had to go down immediately because the food elevator was running again. Floor after floor was descended, the deeper they went the more prisoners who seemed to have become a corpse. Finally the 250th floor was passed and very few people managed to survive, even a man was seen who didn't care about his food and started to go crazy. There were even those who were more concerned with their money. With conditions that are increasingly dying, and there is no food left on the elevator, they finally managed to keep the panicata intact and beautiful. Then the food elevator finally stopped on the 333rd floor, and they thought it was the lowest floor, and finally they met a little girl under the mattress who turned out to be Miharu's child named Molly, the child who had been looking for. When they got off the elevator, suddenly the elevator went back into a dark hallway, fortunately they managed to save the panicata before falling with the elevator. But they realized that storing food would make the temperature in the room hotter, but strangely it didn't apply to the ground floor, because the temperature there didn't change at all. Molly slowly came out of her hiding place and kept looking at the panicata with a hungry look. At first Baharit didn't want to give the food because it was a message for the workers, but out of compassion, the panicata was finally given to Molly so that the little girl could survive. On that night with all his might Goring managed to survive, but not with Baharit who had already died due to loss of blood. Goring now sees the four spirits, namely Terimagasi, Imagiri, Miharu, and Baharit, who say that the real market is not panicata, but the little girl. The next day when the food elevator arrived at their floor, Goring invited Molly to come down with the elevator. The elevator went down far enough to the bottom that it was so dark that even the cells above could no longer be seen. Molly and Goring planned to go up together, but the spirit of Terry Magasi suddenly appeared and said that Goring's struggle was enough until there, because Goring was not his message and only Molly. After Molly falls asleep, Goring leaves her with the figure of Terry Magasi. After that the elevator returns to the top very quickly and Goring believes the message will reach the workers on floor zero, that the terrible system down there must be stopped and humans do not deserve to be treated like that, and the movie ends. What do you think of this movie? Please write your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to hit the like button, and support our channel by subscribing, so that we stay motivated to create more interesting content for you to enjoy. And see you soon.